All right, guys, so what we've got here, we've got frontal view of the skull, okay? And what we can do is I'm just going to talk you through the major bones. And you guys probably know more than you realize. Even after studying, just for a few minutes, it's nice and it's kind of easy to get a handle of, of what's going on here. So we've got this big old bone right in the forehead. What do you call that? That's your frontal bone, okay? Frontal bone it occupies basically your entire forehead, all right? Now on the sides, you've got two big bones that kind of occupy the whole sides of your head. You can Very parietal. Very Good. Yeah, you can barely see them. They're just off in the corner in this view. So if you see this view, you see a little part of it right off to the side, you know that's your parietal bone. Like your peripherals, kind of like you That's a good way to remember it, right? But that's, that's, that's good. That's a good way to remember it. All right. Now, um, we'll just start with the big ones. Your whole lower jaw. Chin mandible. Mental. Mandible. That's, it's the mental area, that's right. The mental region is your, is your chin, but the whole lower jaw is your mandible. Good. Now, your upper jaw, kind of like your whole cheek, that is called what? Maxilla. maxilla. Good. Now the tricky part about the maxilla is that the maxilla occupies this whole region, you know, your jaw near your, your upper uh, teeth. But it also stretches all the way up here, and it borders on the parietal. It has a little strip that goes right beside the um, just the side of the nose, the nasal region. Okay, mm -hmm. so it kind of comes all the way up here. All right. Now we have this your cheekbone, which forms a nice little bridge or arch that goes away from the skull. What's the name of that guy? It starts with a Z. It's your zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. All right, and it meets the maxilla bone about halfway, you know, across your your cheek. Okay, so if your cheek's right here, about right in the middle of your cheek, that's where your maxilla bone comes into contact with your zygomatic, right about here, that little green line. All right. All right. Now we're gonna get into the um the kind of the harder ones that are inside the orbit. Right. The easiest way to remember this is a little um, mnemonic device. That, that I think your book teaches you, and it's never make Lily eat spinach, Zach. Okay, this is how it works. You start right in the medial part of the skull, right above the nose. You've got some tiny bones there. These two bones are your nasal bones. Okay. Right? Yeah, come, it's right above your nose. That's your nasal bone. That's never. Okay? As we go through this mnemonic device, never make Lily eat spin exact. You start in the middle and you kind of go laterally. Doesn't matter which direction you go, you just start in the middle and go laterally. So, never is nasal. Make, what does make stand for? It's the one that goes right next to it. We've already talked about it. It's your cheekbone. Remember, it stretches all the way up here. Oh, maxilla. maxilla. Okay. So nasal, maxilla. Now we go to the lily, the L. That corresponds to this little bone right here, right on the medial surface inside the orbit. That's your lacrimal bone. Lacrimal bone. Lacrimal bone. All right. Then. Lily, eat. The E is this little bone right here. This guy is your ethmoid. Right? Then we go to E. S, spinach, stands for sphenoid bone. That's the larger kind of bone that occupies most of the inside space of your orbit. So I'm going to draw it right here. I'm getting kind of Sphenoid is right there, is right there. And then finally, we end with Z. So we end with the last bone on the lateral side of the orbit. That's just part of the good old zygomatic. Right? That's Z. Key there, you just start. Start with that. Start with that. And those are all the bones on the inside of the eye, inside of the orbit. Okay? So you said don't focus on all the little bones. Well, those, those are the little bones 
inside the eye. But that's it. Like the bigger ones aren't that bad. Once you get the bigger ones, and then you remember this mnemonic device, you nailed it. You know? It's really not that bad. What is that? Never make Lily eat spinach, Zach. That's a mnemonic device that helps you understand the pattern of bones inside the eye when you start right here with the nasal bones. Never nasal, make maxilla, Lily lacrimal, E, ethmoid, S, sphenoid, Zach, Z, zygomatic, perfect. All right, now we've got a couple of holes in the skull that you can see from the outside called foramen. You've got one right here, right above the orbit area, okay? This guy is called the supraorbital foramen. you've got a series of three holes. You've got one little one right here, and you've got two little, you know, oval, stretched out shaped holes that kind of come out to the side. That smaller circle one that's more medial than the others, that's your optic canal. That's where the optic nerve passes through the skull and goes to the brain from your eyeball. This little hole right here that looks like a stretched out oval that's up on top, all right, it's more superior. This guy is your superior orbital fissure. Okay. The guy down here below, if that's superior, what do you think he is? Inferior. Inferior orbital fissure. Then you've got some tiny little holes right here on the below the orbit. These are your infraorbital orbital foramen. Okay, so we got supraorbital foramen and infraorbital foramen. Infra orbital foramen. Two more little holes. It's not too bad. No, no, I'm not trying to overwhelm you guys, right? But we're stepping through it. Two more little holes. One right here. One right here on either side of the chin. What do you think those are called? You said the region already. Mental foramen. Okay? So that's easy. Do you think you don't feel this? They're going to be hard to feel. Not like you can feel them. And that's it, guys. Oh, right? Oh, that's, 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 that's it. it. Yeah, these are the, the important ones. These are for sure, these are the important ones. Oh, right. <laughs> Did, I, I guess thought you said to study the bigger the bones and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think they study the knee. I studied the knee. All right. So this is what we've got going on. This is the inside of the skull. Took the top off. You're kind of looking on the inside. You've got this little bone right here, right up here. It's kind of like a circular bone. That is actually part of our ethmoid. Okay. And you see all these, it has all these little dots in it, all these little holes? That's called the cribriform plate, okay? Cribriform plate of the ethmoid, all right? Then um, this big bone down here that looks like an upside down, it kind of looks like a bat, right? That's your sphenoid bone. And you can tell that um, these bones are actually pretty big. You can see part of the sphenoid on the inside of the orbit. You can also see it kind of on the lateral side of the skull. The sphenoid is a really substantial bone that occupies a lot of the internal kind of structure of the, of the skull. You know, it's big, you just don't see a lot of it on the outside of the skull. It's just, it occupies a bunch of the, uh, you know, you know it, it's a substantial part of the skull. Right here, this bone is kind of on the side, the lateral side of the skull. 
What's that guy called, you think? Kind of stretches up on the lateral side. Temporal. Temporal, you got it. Right? And then back here, this big bone on that kind of occupies the bottom half of the skull, this is the occipital bone. All right? So those are our major bones. Now let's talk about the different uh, holes that we have in the skull. You see this little structure, like right in here? And you can almost, like if you grab a skull, you can actually see it pretty good. It's like this three-dimensional, almost looks like a saddle seat, oh. right in the middle of the sphenoid. That whole structure is called the cella turgica. All right? So this whole thing is kind of the, the cella turgica. Cella turgica. And it's like... No, just know that that whole kind of the whole saddle seat right here is the cella turgica. Okay, what it does is it actually holds the pituitary gland. We'll learn about that in AMP two. But it's a master endocrine gland, and it sits right there in the cella turgica, right? It releases a bunch of hormones. We've got a series of foramen. You got these two holes right at the front of that saddle seat. That is the other half or the other side of your optic canal. So that's where the optic nerve comes in, goes around, goes straight to your cerebral um, cortex right, of your brain. Now we've got a series of holes or foramen kind of that are flanking the cella turgica. If these three guys right here, the, the way to remember it is R O S, like Ross, okay? The R is the hole that's closest to the optic canal. This is the foramen rotundum. Okay. The O is a little bit bigger. It looks like an oval. That's great because this is the foramen oval. And then the S is the foramen spinosum. And what we're left with is this big guy that kind of hangs out right near the base of that saddle seat. This guy is the forum, foreman la, um, lacerum. Okay. L A C E R U N. Then you got this huge foreman right here, biggest one in the skull. What do you call that one? You got some there. Big one, biggest one. Spinal cord goes right through it. Foramen magnum. Okay. Okay. Then you've got some pretty big foramen that are on the, each side, lab just lateral to the foramen magnum. They actually occupy the right on the border between the occipital bone and the temporal bone. These guys are your jugular foramen. They provide a, um, a nice passageway for a lot of our cranial nerves, like our vagus nerve, our hypoglossal nerve. And that's about it. Okay? So that's about the resolution that, that would, would really get you a you know, perfect score on the exam. Uh, do the arteries also pass through the trigger? Yeah, they do. Okay. Right? Only the internal, um, actually not the artery, the artery does it. It's only, the only one that passes through the jugular foramen is the internal jugular vein, right? A lot of the other arteries will kind of zoom right around and they'll come in, um, they'll come in through, uh, through other, other. The, the internal jugular, no, it's just the vein, it's just the internal jugular vein. The internal carotid, that comes in through a form, and I can't remember which one though. I think it comes through the, the form and magnum, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, I, I'll have to recheck on that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, what we got here.
We've got the lateral view of the skull. I'll just go ahead and label this stuff. Can you guys see this yeah. recently well? All right. So, big bone right here occupies the lateral side of the skull. Parietal, perfect. All right, forehead, frontal, back of the head, occipital, side of the head, temporal, lower jaw, mandible, perfect. Upper jaw, maxilla, all right, cheek, Forms that arc, starts with a Z. Zygomatic, perfect. Zygomatic, all right. Now we can start with these little bones, and we'll use that mnemonic that I erased over there, but that's all right. Starts with N, never is nasal, right? Never make maxilla, we already have that, so never make lily, L, Lacrimal, okay? Never make lily eat is ethmoid right here, right? Spinach, right? This is where it gets tricky. From the frontal view, that sphenoid bone does come right up next to the ethmoid, but in this lateral view, you can't see it. It's blocked by the zygomatic. But what you do see is this other part of the, of the sphenoid stretches all the way on the side of the head, just um, back from the temporal bone, I mean just back from the temple. So just anterior to the temporal bone, you'll see a big section right here of the sphenoid bone. And that's just a testament because that sphenoid bone is huge. You know, you can see it's right here. It's just, um, just anterior to the temporal bone in that lateral view. And you can kind of see it on these skulls. Right. It's like you've got your temporal bone all in here. Let's see right there. That's sphenoid. That's sphenoid right there. That's just one, the outer side of the sphenoid. The sphenoid stretches inside the skull, and you see another side of it all in here. Right? So you see multiple sides of that sphenoid. It's just a really substantial bone that kind of stretches around. So that's good. Now let's talk about the different sutures. You've got a suture that divides the frontal bone from the parietal bone. This guy is called the coronal suture because it's like a crown. You know, it's like a crown that kind of faces, that goes across the forehead. You got this suture here that separates the parietal from the temporal. That one is called the squamous suture. Then you've got one that separates the occipital bone from the two parietal bones. That's called the lambdoid. You can remember that one because when you look at the back of the head, you look at it from like the back view, it looks like a little A almost. You know? Like if you look at the back of the model with a head on it, it looks like a lambda or an A. Or a It does. It actually looks more like a piece of You're right. So, yeah, it's like a little A. Cool. All right. And you got one more suture, it runs right down the middle of the skull, separates the two parietal bones. That's your sagittal suture, just like a sagittal section. All right, oh, a couple more little components to this. Um, see this little bump right here on the um, inferior side of the temporal bone? That's called the mastoid process. And this guy right here, the sharper little spike that's just anterior to the mastoid process, that's your styloid process. Then you've got a dark little hole that's just beside, right beside that styloid process. This guy is your, what do I want to use? 
Yep, this is your external acoustic meatus. And that leads to your ear, right? So that's the hole in your temporal bone that is the pathway to your middle and inner ear, right? So that's all buried in there. And that's the lateral view, right? Not too bad.